check mic. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Nikki Acosta. I'm with Rackspace. I'm a private cloud evangelista. And I decided to turn my session into a panel, uh, partially to drive attendance, but partially because there are a lot of great things happening in, in OpenStack uh, career-wise. And one of the great things about OpenStack is it's helping old companies become new and helping new companies get off the ground. And I think it's a really, really exciting time. So I'm going to take you through a few slides, and then uh, we'll have a, our panelists share their stories and their career path. I think um, another great thing that's happening in OpenStack today is not just creating technical jobs, but it, it's creating jobs um, that kind of run the gamut. You know, there's, there's marketing, there's PR, there's um, sales, there's all kinds of great things happening that isn't just limited to a technical scope. So my legal department uh, wants me to display this uh, fine statement, since we're going to talk about careers. Uh, Barbara, if you're watching at home, that's for you. All right, so let's look at cloud job postings. And what I did is I uh, did a, a quick search on Simply Hired. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to really say much, because I think it speaks for itself. But congratulations to all of you, because you're doing it right. Uh-oh, I see people taking pictures. I'll pause on that so you can tweet that. Tell Peter I love him. He might be watching this too. Hi, Peter. All right. So it's not just the U.S., right? I, I did a search. There were 901 job postings in the U.S. Uh, just for OpenStack-related careers. Um, if I looked globally at Simply Hired, there are more than 20, there's about 23 countries represented that have postings that have OpenStack in them. So it's not just limited to the U.S. There's you know, tons of things that are happening all over the world, and there's traction in almost every major country that you can think of. Uh, and that's, that's exciting. Um, it's, it's truly a global effort. You want to take a picture of that, Jeff? All right, got it? If you want, I can send this to you afterwards. All right, so now that's all the way, I'm going to introduce our awesome panelists. Their Twitters are up here. We'll go ahead and start with Gretchen. But the question is, tell me about your career path to OpenStack. And I know they've been kind of different. I have a lot of folks here representing a lot of different things. There's a common denominator with three of these folks, as two were former rackers, and Mike is a current racker. But we'll, we'll start with Gretchen down at the end. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I'm <clears throat> my name is Gretchen Curtis. I'm the co-founder of OpenStack. Oh, there's my Linux folks up there. Um, so my career path to OpenStack I'm actually quite, uh, not quite sure how I got here. Being an English literature major, having a background in journalism and PR and marketing, and now I work um, for a tech company, Christy Cloud, um, doing all sorts of weird computery crap. <laughs> um, so, okay, but seriously. So, um, started off my career in journalism, worked for a little local newspaper, um, joined Flock.com, um, ended up working, uh, met Josh there, my co-founder, um, ended up um, at NASA somehow running PR for a little project called NASA Kahlua, so I'm going to put that up there, and um, that sort of segued into um, working for uh, a guy you guys may know, you may have seen yesterday, Chris Kemp, who um, became NASA's first um, CTOs for IT during a very exciting um, time for NASA and the federal government is was moving toward um, an open government. We had a new um, we had a new leader in Barack Obama, and he was really adamant about um, opening up a lot of the government's data. And NASA Nebula was key to that movement. So I kind of found myself in the middle of this movement. Happened to be a person that wrote a lot. My background is writing and talking and communicating with people. And um, you know, tech is not a very um, you know there aren't a lot of people like that in tech. So kind of seized the opportunity. Got a a lot of fantastic opportunities to help um, write the NASA Open Government Plan. Um, got an opportunity to meet um, C federal CIO Vivek Kundra. Uh, write the federal cloud computing strategy. So, um, and then after NASA. 
Vanessa, uh, you know, got a call from Josh and said, hey, we're starting a company. We need somebody like you. So uh, that's, that's what I do. Well, what was it like working at NASA? You know, it, to me, it seems like it's kind of this, this, this uh, mysterious space agency that, you know, has, you know, big walls around it. What was that like? It was, um, there were a lot of really wonderful things, and it was also very challenging. Um, I think NASA struggles like any other large organization with, you know, the process you wanted, yet how much is too much. And, um, you know, it's a federal, it's a government agency. We all have heard the rumors of what that is like. A lot of the, the rumors are true, um, but I must say that there are a lot of really smart and crazy people at NASA who are really trying to change things. Thanks, Gretchen. Anyone have any questions for Gretchen? I have another follow-up question for you here in a minute. Let's turn it over to uh, to John Furrier. Hi, guys. Uh, so I didn't actually know who was going to be on this panel until I showed up today. And uh, I've now figured out why Nikki asked me to be on here, because I'm the gray beard. <laughs> okay. um, Instant so, credibility. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I've been doing uh, software development for more years than I want to admit. Uh, I started at IBM. I was there for seven years. I went to Microsoft. I was there for 14. Uh, built some products that uh, you either love or hate, uh, the, the, the primary one being the Exchange server. Um, I left Microsoft in 2001 and really had a, uh, a revelation, which is, Linux, open source, this is this is the, the wave of the future. And so spent the, the next few years doing startups uh, around that, got heavily involved, uh, became a, a, a zealot, if you will, for open source, um, and did a, a lot of uh, work with working on Rails and that community and so on and so forth. Um, around 2007, uh, I was working uh, as a CTO for a company that did uh, internet surveys, and we were collecting a lot of data and trying to figure out what to do with it, right? So this is what, what they call today is big data, uh, is, is what the problem that we were dealing with. And it became very clear to me that uh, cloud computing was going to be really big. Um, and at that point in time, you know, you couldn't tell how big it was going to be and how it ex uh, had exploded in the last few years. But I wanted to be involved, right? So I was based out of Seattle. I talked to the Amazon guys. Didn't really like the culture there uh, too much. Um, and then looked around for, you know, who's the other interesting player and found Rackspace. And uh, actually moved from Seattle to Texas. My friends thought I was crazy. Uh, but uh, uh, it's worked out pretty well. I enjoy uh, living in San Antonio. Uh, uh, and came down to Rackspace to run the development for their public cloud. Um, the, uh, had a lot of uh, interesting experiences there. Um, John, I think, will talk a little bit about building Swift. Um, so I was I was the uh, the nominal lead of that, but uh, the, the developers did all the, the good work there. Um, so we built uh, we built Swift, and then we started having these interesting conversations in, within the company, which is you know how are we really going to compete against Amazon, right? I mean Rackspace is, is a great company, but it's only about 2,500 people, and as you know, uh, you probably all know, Amazon has 2,500 PhDs working on the problem. So. Uh, we came up with this concept of, hey, what happens if we open source? And it was a, it was not a um, uh, easy decision to to do within uh, within Rackspace. Um, there was a lot of contention, a lot of debate, um, and finally, you know, pulled the trigger. Um, fortuitously, uh, we saw the announcement from the NASA guys saying that they were going to do a compute project uh, based on Python and looked a lot like what we had done with Swift, you know, conceptually and, and uh, from a design pattern standpoint, got the teams together stuck in, basically launched OpenStack with a handful of people in a room. And on Monday when I was uh, sitting there with a thousand people at the, uh, the kickoff to this, it's like my mind was just blown and, you know, like what has happened uh, from that, you know, handful of people to, to what we see today. It's, uh, it's tremendous. Um, 
Yeah, I think that one of the things that we did, and um, you know, I give a lot of credit to, to Josh and other folks, is you know we did uh, hold true to our open door principles, right? And the community that we're building is all about the you know the open open principles that we've embraced, and it's uh, truly a community center. Um, so I uh, ran the development team at Rackspace Cloud. Um, I transitioned over to being the uh, OpenStack at Rackspace guy. So the uh, the people who were specifically working on on uh, OpenStack uh, community manager uh, Terry, you guys probably know Terry, um, and people who doing specific things for for OpenStack, uh, the open source project uh, were for me, and that was that was fun. I became a member of the the uh, policy project board, which doesn't exist anymore, um, and you know really you know had a, a tremendous ride in. in So uh, my career then left, I, I decided to leave Rackspace for a bigger challenge, which was standing up the HP public cloud. HP bet their public cloud strategy on OpenStack. So I came over and stood up the first version of that. Um, with AppFog, um, it's, it's the next kind of hill to take, I think, in cloud computing, which is uh, platform as a service. The question is, once, you know, once all these 6,000 people that, that are in the uh, OpenStack Foundation actually stand up the clouds and they have them running, what do you do with them? And the answer to that is, you know, like it always has been, it's all about developers and applications and solving business problems. So that's what, that's what we're doing at AppFog. Uh, the the uh, last thing I'll say before I hand it on to John is um, not only my career has been enhanced by being part of this community, um, but I've been a hiring manager. I've hired a lot of people, um, and you know, it's it's a tremendous opportunity for anybody who wants to really be involved in the community. Um, there's there's opportunities everywhere. Everything from you know being core contributors to the uh, the OpenStack projects, to documentation, to business oriented um, uh, disciplines. So I you know I I've seen the the spectrum. I don't see any end in sight. Um, so I think that uh, that that's where I'll leave it. And I'll hand it off to John. All right, John, your turn. Other John. <coughs> I'm John Dickinson. Uh, I work with Swift. I've been part of that since Swift became in. Uh, I'm currently working at SwiftStack, and I've had probably not quite as a convoluted a journey through uh, through my career so far. Um, but uh, SwiftStack is my uh, third professional programming technology role. Uh, I started, uh, I, I grew up in Texas and I went to school in Central Texas and after I graduated, uh, looking for a computer, uh, for personal reasons, I, I was looking to stay in that area for the, for the time being uh, and graduated in 2002 looking for programming jobs right after the tech crunch in Central Texas and that didn't go really well. So I ended up uh, installing cable for a year uh, but after that, <laughs> I, uh, I did get a job in a, a life insurance company uh, in Central Texas and uh, learned an incredible amount there, picked up Python there, and uh, had, a, had a really growing experience as far as learning how to take things from start to finish, uh, uh, developing a lot of internal uh, infrastructure needs. And even still to this day, when I think of the prototypical use case and the user for OpenStack and all of the things that we do, I think of that that life insurance company that I work for. You've got uh, needs for uh, computing a large amount of data in parallel. You've got a, a varying workload throughout the day, throughout the month, as you're doing policy calculations, being able to do things on demand and efficiently use your computing resources. Very large storage needs as far as uh, some sort of lots of unstructured data, which is why I like here at this at this uh, branch of Swift. Um, and then I decided to move on from there, and I was applying around, and uh, saw a job posting at Rackspace, and applied, and was hired, and it turned out the first day I started at Rackspace was the first day that coding began on Swift, and was able to uh, jump in from the very beginning uh, in, uh, on the cloud files team at Rackspace. Uh, tremendously amazing experience. Uh, some of the smartest people I've ever worked for were on that team, are still on that team. Rackspace. Um, worked with John a little bit uh, as he came in. 
after I joined Rackspace, uh, and then uh, was a, the developer manager for Cloud Cloud for a while. Um, and then OpenStack happened, and we we built Swift, we launched it to production, and then OpenStack happened, and that kind of changed everything internally at Rackspace, and especially on our cloud uh, our cloud division. And so we suddenly saw that there were so many people being excited about what was going on. This was this was, we we had the tools and the technologies to provide everyone with this really great solution to pro real problems that people had. And so I've always been a, um, a developer that's not just focused on the developer stuff. I've always enjoyed talking to people, getting involved, uh, teaching people, and uh, helping them understand what's going on. And so when I, as I had those opportunities at Rackspace to uh, go to different conferences, to get involved here at the design summits, um, I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, through there, I was uh, you know, seeing other uh, small companies start up. Uh, people like Piston, Nebula, um, CloudScale and get involved. Um, and then finally SwiftStack uh, starting and focusing on this product that I've been involved in since the beginning. It was an opportunity that I found was incredibly exciting, uh, the opportunity to be a part of actually building a company uh, rather than just being a part of a team building a product. Um, and so uh, this, this summer I moved on to SwiftStack and uh, it's a tremendous personal opportunity for me. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it moved out to San Francisco from Texas, um, enjoy living on the West Coast, and uh, it's been great. And you do great work leading, leading the Swift team here. Thanks. And Mike, your, your journey's kind of still relatively fresh and new, I guess. Yes, yes it is. Yeah, tell us about, about your journey. So first off, good morning. My name is Mike Metron, and I'm a solutions architect at Rackspace uh, in our private cloud division. Uh, my background is computer science. Um, I kind of got started into the whole cloud business, uh, if you will, um, at Cornell, where I did my master's, and uh, I was doing a lot of theoretical and applied research uh, for distributed systems. Um, and so because of that, uh, I was back in 2006, 2007, uh, the, SOS, you know, the, the recession, if you will, uh, didn't really lend itself to, to a lot of open job opportunities. Um, so I got recruited um, by the U.S. government, which was my previous employer. Um, specifically, I was with the Department of Energy, working for Sandia National Laboratories, um, which is a subsidiary of Lockheed Martin. Um, while I was there, a lot of my key responsibilities uh, include uh, performing cloud technological assessments, uh, building up a general knowledge base, and at the same time, just doing a lot of technological vulnerability analysis on these systems for government adoption and usage. Um, and I think, you know, kind of in the same period, um, everyone was kind of trying to define what cloud was. And even the government, um, it's funny to hear, Greg just you know, touched that with regards to NASA, um, a lot of the government was obviously interested in cloud, but we didn't know if we should stand on our own, if we should you know, learn from what was currently out there, or partner with other people. So a lot of the same, you know, similar problems that people were encountering, um, but in a much distributed and way more red tape, if you will. Um, so uh, my journey in towards, uh, towards Rackspace is actually kind of interesting because um, what happened was I started uh, playing around with a lot of, you know, cloud technologies as I was normally doing. Um, and OpenStack came up on my radar about a year, a uh, bit over a year ago. And, you know, I, I downloaded whatever source I could find of the docs um, that were on the web uh, and sort of kicked the, the tires, so to speak. But uh, it still wasn't enough, you know, it was still an early phase for OpenStack. So I looked for any training that I could find uh, just to kind of fill the, the gaps that I had. Um, and I stumbled upon Rackspace's uh, website. They were offering a training course um, that uh, looked great. You know, I had a deep dive into Nova and to Swift. So I, I signed up for it and I joined the class. And, uh, well, there, our teacher, Tony Campbell, is actually sitting in this room. He's a uh, director of training at OpenStack uh, at Rackspace. And uh, he just had just literally every single question that I, you know, that I had, he had the right answer for it. Um, and he did it with a smile. And on top of that, he just had this very upbeat and positive vibe about OpenStack, which, you know, it's almost, um, what's the word? It's, it's almost enchanting in the sense that he can, he can speak so positive about a project um, that's so open. Um, and so that got me excited, that got me very interested. And, and as the class went on, you know, the, my engagement just kind of went from, you know, usual participant to, you know, trying to promote and help the class out. Um, and I enjoyed doing it. And um, ironically enough, I happened to catch the attention of Scott Sanchez, uh, who's sitting here in the audience as well. Um, and he's a director of strategy and just overall business development uh, for a private cloud at Rackspace and just overall badass business uh, and cloud ninja. 
Um, so we got to talking and uh, uh, about the possible opportunities that could exist between Rackspace and myself. And six months later, which was this past June, um, I became a Racker officially. So I was drinking mad with some more Kool Aid. Uh, um, I was uh, I was you know highly highly motivated to to work with Open Stack. And you know and now I'm you know sitting here being hugely honored and privileged to sit amongst this panel of great cloud experts. Um, and for, for me, it's very nice, especially uh, given the fact that I was government for about four years. Uh, we did a lot of great work, um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's very it's very tight in there, right? Um, there's a reason that we do great work, but no one hears about it. Uh, and given the fact that um, the precautionary steps they have to take, it kind of created a black hole, if you will, in my career. Um, so being able to be with Rackspace has, has opened up a whole new world. So I'm, I'm almost a, a born-again cloud computer person. Uh, so it's nice because, uh, you know, I'm getting to, to be uh, in opportunities uh, such, as, uh, such as this one and, uh, and just participate more publicly and try to get my voice out there. So it's, it's been great, right? You know, I've had a great success in just four months with Rackspace, and I'm highly looking forward to, you know, following up next year. Awesome. So one thing I think that's kind of unique, I, I think about kind of, I know where you work, but kind of where you've worked in the past. Tell me about the culture at your companies. I know Piston has a, a tremendous brand. I mean, they're kind of hats. They're very well dressed, the bow ties. Josh McKinty's socks matches his tie. Um, <laughs> that was on purpose. <laughs> tell, tell me a little bit about, about the culture at the companies that you work at or the companies that you're building. Culture, wow. Um, well, if you want to talk about brand, we could do a whole other talk on brand. <laughs> have all seen the hats and bow ties and things. Um, culture. So when you're starting a company, it's really important that your employees are very bought in and love your culture and love your brand. So you know when you're starting out, you really kind of want to take cues from who it is you're hiring, who your founding team is, and you want to try to be as authentic as possible. Because if your employees love it, they will sell it and they will feel proud and that will translate to everything you do. That will translate to every conversation that they have with another person. It will make everything easier, fundraising, recruiting, you know, you know, customer um, interviews and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, we, we basically are, um, I know it seems very gimmicky, but we are very authentic. The guys, we have fancy Fridays at, um, at Piston Cloud because the guys love dressing up the hats came from them. The socks <laughs> came from them. They have mustaches. They have monocles. They, they, it, I, you know, it is great. They, and we love it and we embrace it and we, 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 we roll with it, right? Um, we were very fortunate to be able to recruit some of the smartest guys out of NASA from um, the teams we work with, um, you know, on Nebula and then, you know, in other groups inside NASA, and, uh, you know, they kind of brought their own unique culture into the company, and we just we just embraced it and ran with it, because that felt like the right thing to do. What about you, John, at AppBog? I know you guys kind of work in a distributed fashion. You guys are kind of all over the place, right? Exactly, right. So I, I, I think uh, I'd re reiterate a lot of what Gretchen said in terms of, you know, you build culture by the people that you hire, and, you know, if you get employees that are excited about what you're doing, it shows up in um, a variety of different ways. Uh, AppFog is, uh, we are a dynamic startup. We are, um, you know, in a space which is very uh, interesting. Uh, we basically take the open source uh, uh, infrastructure players like uh, OpenStack, and then we layer Cloud Foundry, uh, which is another open, stack, uh, open source project uh, over the top of it. Um, so. Uh, the guys that we, we hire are very uh, uh, passionate about what they do. They're very passionate about open source. Um, from a, you know, day-to-day -day how do we work business, you know, we don't have everybody in an office. Uh, we are very distributed. Uh, for instance, you know, our main, our main uh, office is in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I live in Texas, San Antonio, Texas. We have a couple of the, uh, the other Texas contingent here uh, as well. Um, so, and then we have developers, you know, wherever they live, and, and it's really a lot like how we built uh, OpenStack in a very distributed fashion. And the 
exciting part about that is, is that people get excited about you know, continuous integration, continuous QA, continuous deployment. We're pushing code all the time. You know, so we're really on that cutting edge of how you build software, uh, which really resonates with uh, the types of folks that, that are uh, part of the company. And then it, it, if we take a look at you know, how you sell it, uh, you know, how you engage at a, at a, a BD or bi you know, biz dev uh, level, um, you know, that kind of energy just kind of bubbles out. And you know, I, I don't think the app fog is going to be um, uh, accused of being shy. We will meet with anybody anytime and we'll be uh, very uh, evangelical about you know, our space, which is platform as a service. SwiftStack is in a slightly earlier position than both AppFog and Piston, uh, a little bit of a newer company, and so we're still building that out. Uh, but what I found at, uh, at, at SwiftStack is that the people who are there are very, very intense and very focused on making sure that we get stuff done. Uh, they come from a background. Uh, one of the things I really like is that there's not a lot of inbreeding at SwiftStack. Uh, most of the people, and, and I'm not saying that necessarily always is a bad thing. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of lot to be gained from uh, sharing responsibility uh, in the and, and learning from one another in the OpenStack community. Uh, but most of the people at SwiftStack, uh, before working at SwiftStack, actually had zero involvement with OpenStack. And so what they're able to do is bring in their uh, their previous career history of building scale, building uh, uh, production products, uh, building things that are uh, done in a distributed manner, uh, interfacing with customers, building teams. And uh, so I think that what we've done right now is uh, brought together people who are singularly focused on building excellent products and uh, working very well with that. And it's actually very similar to what I found at Rackspace. And so when you look at the team I was on at Rackspace versus the team of, that is the company at SwiftStack, I find a lot of similarities there. Uh, when I was at Rackspace, I always told people that I wor I'm working with the smartest people I've ever worked with. Now that I'm at SwiftStack, I have to say I'm working with those are I've been working with some of the smartest people because uh, the, the people I've met at uh, SwiftStack have been uh, blown me away quite as, just as much. Um, and so we're we're focusing on on building out uh, our team is focusing on uh, other people who are willing to dive in, intensely focus on the code, uh, uh, iterate and a broad range of responsibility to, to get stuff done. So as we as we build our, our team, as we're growing over the next uh, year or so, I mean, we'll, we'll more solidify what our culture is. And it probably won't be hats and bow ties. But, uh, you know, it'll, it'll reflect the team that we're on. Uh, and uh, it's, it's something that I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing. Mike? So, uh, again, you know, coming from government, it's it's everything, you know, as Gretchen said, it's, it's everything all rumors are true. It's very office space-ish. Um, uh, it's darkly lit. Um, a lot of buildings I, I spent numerous days in actually don't have windows um, uh, for various you know security precaution reasons. Um, so that that really that gets to you. Um, uh, and uh, after you do it for about four years, you kind of forget what the sun looks like. Um, but coming to Rackspace, wow, that is night and day for me. Um, it's just so energetic and vibrant and, and fun. At, at the castle, it's it's like an adult Disneyland. Um, and the castles are our headquarters in, in San Antonio. And I don't know, it, it's just different. And there's videos out there of a lot of, of Lanham, I think, talking about, about the castle and how special it is. Um, there's there's no concept of offices or cubicles, and, you know, and there's windows and, and sun comes in from the roof and they're all sides. So, you know, I'm, I'm a happy camper. Um, sometimes I wear suntan lotion to know how much, how much sun I'm getting, um, and the, the the exciting part is like that goes across the board for all the employees, for all the high level up executives, and and that makes you know executives like the CEO, the CTOs, all the, those very powerful people, even just you know my own manager, it, it makes them very um, reachable. And in government, there's a lot of red tape, um, and I, I couldn't just talk to my director if I needed to. And at Rackspace, that's actually encouraged, and, and, and it's set up for, for you to do so. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's almost required nowadays. Uh, the, the Googles and the Amazons, they, they, they've set a standard um, for, for how our, our business operates. And, and in a business filled with so many smart people, 
they're going to manage themselves. So you should give them the proper environment to, to be able to relax, to work comfortably. Because when you're in these buildings for 8 to 12 hours, you need the right environment to support you. Because if not, you're just going to go crazy. Um, and, and so I'm just you know, appreciative because it's, it's a whole new world for me, and, and, and I'm excited. And, and for being 4,500-plus people that Rackspace is, there's so many startup emotions and startup feelings and just customs. Uh, uh, for example, at the Cows, we have a slide that goes from one floor to the other. Uh, people design uh, their, their areas with all sorts of personal you know, stuff from home. There's banners all over the place. I'm in the San Francisco office, and you know, it, we have arcade games. We have kegs on tap. We have wine in the fridge. Uh, we have, you know, we're not as formal as Piston, but we have formal Fridays every, you know, every third Friday of the, of the month where we, we see people in tuxedos and tuxedo t-shirts. Uh, so it's, it, it really plays in the culture that, you know, everyone's unique and, and that should, that should be a part of you, not just, you know, at home, but also at work. Uh, and, and, and that's, 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 that's great for me because, uh, again, we work with a lot of smart people, some of the smartest people in the industry and, there's no reason why you should limit them in terms of you know what they need to get their job done and produce the best results that you know they can possibly accomplish. So Rackspace I think breaks the mold for for having enterprise size company, um, and and they they, show, they they stay true to that and they're always up for for opinions. They want to hear with you know what you have to say and and for a company of that size that is you know that is world is way different from your your government departments and agencies or just you know. So, so there's there's sticklers for for policies and for rules and and, and procedures and and it's just it's new it's it's awesome and that's the way it should be. So I'm I'm hugely excited to be a part of it and you know be able to be exposed to such an environment. Um, and uh, I welcome even more of that. And you know these guys are obviously setting the standards in, in their own way, and that's how it should be. I'm so pumped up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're running out of time here. Very quickly, um, if you want to start with. Gretchen, again, I, I noticed all of you guys have open recs uh, posted on your websites. We are hiring all the people. Tell, tell the people in the camera who are watching this hiring. video who aren't at this conference, um, what, are, what are you hiring for? All the things. Um, we are hiring. All the jobs. <laughs> all, the, all the jobs. We, uh, we are hiring engineers. We are hiring um, engineers that like to uh, talk to people, uh, like customers. Um, Marketing and sales. Uh, if you do something and you're smart and you like to work, then um, talk to us because uh, we have so many opportunities um, that we're recruiting on right now. So, um, and it, it really is a fantastic uh, group of people. We have a lot of fun, as you guys can probably tell. <laughs> um, we're hosting a party tonight. So um, I hope all of you can come. There is no, you know, open guest list. There, you, we don't have to check you in. There are no drink tickets. The, uh, the, venue, the venue accommodates 2,000 people. So you will get in. So come and party with us, hang out, and learn more about Piston Cloud. Nice, nicely done. <laughs> Follow that, John. <laughs> so I, I, I will uh, again say everything she said. I agree with. Uh, we, we are a dynamic startup. We are we are looking for smart people, right? So if you have a passion for this and you want to start looking toward the future, right? And the future is after we've built these clouds, what do you do with them, right? And we are providing a solution uh, to that. Um, we're just looking for smart people, and I, I love the comment that like to work. Um, but uh, you know, we we are um, definitely hiring in, in all aspects. I will say that um, our company particularly resonates with open source developers that are very passionate about that, that want to you know be involved with OpenStack, that want to be involved with Cloud Foundry, uh, and really you know kind of um, um, take it to the next level. Likewise, we at SwiftStack are hiring, <laughs> like everyone at OpenStack. Um, we're, we're currently uh, uh, acquiring customers, uh, growing out to meet those demands. Uh, we're looking for developers. We're looking for salespeople. We're looking for people with ops experience. Um, I, think, I think the general rule that everything I've seen in, in OpenStack is uh, there's a ton of smart people. Uh, and what we're really looking for is people who have experience of getting stuff done. Um, 
you need to be smart and get stuff done. Uh, and being able to demonstrate that uh, is not, there's not a place in, I don't think, any of these companies for people who, who want to come along and say, hey, look, there's this open stack and it seems popular. Let's ride the coattails. Uh, but let's demonstrate uh, uh, the ability to actually solve problems for customers. And that's what we're focusing on at SwiftStack. Uh, we realize that there are um, just in it, there's an enormous need uh, of solving storage problems uh, in in the world, and uh, I, I believe that you know Swift solves a uh, good subset of that of those problems extremely well. And uh, so what we're looking at doing is is meeting those needs, and uh, you know make all the world use Swift, make all the world use use OpenStack. Uh, I I truly believe that the uh, storage is the foundation upon which our entire technology uh, stack is based. You've got to be able to store your data before you can do the interesting compute and, and delivery uh, delivery things that the entirety of OpenStack uh, delivers. Um, so let's solve that problem. Let's do it extremely well. Uh, let's strive for excellence, and uh, that's what we're looking for at SwiftStack. So I'd be happy to talk. We've got a table out uh, out front as well. Um, people who are interested in uh, helping grow a company and uh, solve real-world problems at very exciting scales. Awesome. Um, I'm going to wrap up here very quickly. Anyone have any quick questions for these guys and gals? All right. So, uh, of course, this wouldn't be a session without a shameless plug, so I'm going to uh, give a shout-out to Tony there in the back who's built out a Rackspace certification for OpenStack. The certification exams begin in December, so you can become a Rackspace certified technician for OpenStack. And the, the first uh, round will start in December in San Antonio with plans to have global classes available in the very near future. There's public training courses there as well. So for those of you who aren't here or those of you who are here who are new to OpenStack, uh, if you want a four-day intensive course to get um, familiar with OpenStack and learn how to build and troubleshoot and administer OpenStack powered clouds, uh, definitely take a training course. Uh, if you want to get involved in OpenStack, I encourage it. There's meetup groups all over the place. If there's not one in your city, start one. Um, we are seeing a tremendous amount of, of participation, and specifically uh, San Francisco has a huge uh, meetup group. Austin has a huge meetup group. Um, I got to give props to a tool in, um, in India. He's traveled on a bus for 14 hours on his own dime to, to, uh, to start a meetup group. So. A lot of cool things happening. Again, I encourage you to participate in your, your local meetups. It's a good way to stay connected to the community and find career opportunities as well. If you're new to OpenStack or you're looking in a, or for a career in OpenStack, my guess is that you'll be able to network with people and find uh, some opportunities. Uh, last but not least, if you are interested in a career at Rackspace, we're, we've got like 30 postings up as of today with probably another 15 that are going to get loaded here in the next couple of days. Where's Dave and Blake? Dave and Blake. There they are. Those two guys over there have offer letters ready to go if you guys are interested. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> is your, we, we've, we, we've extended a few offers this week. So, And for those of you who uh, we might have annoyed, <laughs> our recruitment team might have annoyed, my sincerest apologies. Um, great things happening in OpenStack. Super pumped. The future looks bright. There's tons of opportunities in OpenStack for those of you who are are watching uh, the videotape, definitely get involved. I mean, there's, you know, you're in a recession, or people say we're in a recession, the unemployment rate's high, but um, obviously the, this is one place where we're not really feeling that. It's, it's a supply and, and demand issue, I think, at this point, so. It, it, just to quickly add, it, OpenStack is real. You know, this, this is no longer uh, an incubated project. It's not only changing enterprises and saving enterprises money, it's changing people's careers, so. Believe the hype. So, Yay. the hype is real. Thank you all for attending. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, panelists. Awesome panelists. Thank you.